Okay. This is part two of my still life photography, the black plexiglass table. And there's a difference between the black flux table and the white. And they're used differently. And I'll talk about that tonight. And these are some sample images I'm gonna demo in the Photoshop demo. And again, I'm gonna talk how I use actions and blending modes. I'll talk about how I use filters. So tonight's agenda, it's gonna be about, of course, the block plex table and how to use the simple lighting modifiers with strobes. So if you have a strobe, you can use like a white card instead of another strobe or a silver card. And then I'll talk about camera settings and then there'll be Adobe Photoshop demo. I'll start with the Adobe camera raw, then I'll go to Adobe Photoshop. And these are all the still life tables, but tonight's focus is going to be on the big black box or square, the black plex table. And these are lighting modifiers that could be used with any table, including the black plexiglass table. Like anything mirror or silver, it's great for adding light in a dramatic way. You have a strobe and you can use a silver card in place of another strobe to add some gentle light. Or if you need to use light in a soft way, you could use a white reflector or a white card. Black cards are great for when a strobe bleeds too much light, you cover part of the strobe. It's also Black cards or minus cards are great for taking out glares when you do product photography. Then this plastic fusion scrims where if you want to soften the light, you put the scrim in front of the strobe. And there are many ways you can use the scrims in the black plex table at a 90 degree angle and also at a 45 degree angle with and you hold it in place with, you know, spring clamps or G clamps. I'll talk about that later. Then the colorful gels, which you can change the color of the background, color of the subject. And then there's medium sized white plexiglass sheets where if you wanna make the light softer, you just stick the white plexiglass sheet in front of the strobe. Then a cinefill where it's black aluminum foil where if you want to create a snoot with either, you know, duct tape or small spring clamps, that's a good way to do it. And then there's blinds for natural light. And the thing about blinds is for dramatic effect, you want to angle the light at a 40 foot angle by aiming the blinds down of the subject. So the light comes from the sun at a 45 degree angle. Sometimes you can just use just natural lights. The light comes down, you angle the blinds at a 40 or 30 angle, and that's a beautiful photograph. And we talked about, you know, spring clamps, C or G clamps, they're great at holding things. Like the white flex table, they do the same thing, but differently. And the same thing with duct tape or clothespins. And again, you can purchase some of this at an art store, some of this at a hardware store or at a drugstore. There are many ways to use the white, the black flex table. You can use one flash, one continuous. You can use a lead light with or without flash, just natural ambient light. Like the white flex table, two things are important with the black flex table. Angle the camera and also position the light. And I'll talk about that later. And there are many ways to use this with one light, two lights, or you could have a white card or a silver card for light. And there are also ways to use the scrim, and I'll demonstrate later, at 
a 40 frame degree angle or at 90 degrees. This is how to use the black flex table with the scrim. And you notice that it's at a 40 frame degree angle and it's held by poles. And this is a black ballistic glass sheet I brought from a plastic door in Baltimore. And again, these are stretcher frames bought from Plaza Arts. And this is plastic fusion bought from BH. So you have a flash, you want to add some lights. You could use maybe silver cards, smart mirrors, or maybe white cards, depending on what you want to do with the lights. And then sometimes, you know, you need a little lights. I'll demonstrate later, but I recommend everybody start with one light and try to use a silver card at either angle or a white card. And I'll demonstrate that later. Again, we're still talking about the 40 degree angle where this is parallel to this. And some people have it, you know, 24 inches away. You want to make sure that the light is aiming at the subject. And this is where you have to angle the camera. Because when you lower your body, the light, it looks different. And this is a great setup for anything small like a watch. But then you could add another light. And we'll talk about that next. And this is a way to add light. This is coming at a 40 degree angle. Suppose this were a mug. If you're gonna have just this and not this, you'd have a nice silhouette. And that's what you want, but that's why we gotta have a light either here or here. And this is flash. You could also bounce in light with, you know, a silver card or a white card. This is how to use the black flex table with the scrim at 90 degrees. And there's, I'll talk about vignetting and non vignetting effects, which is the next several slides. With just one light, this is great for like a clear glass subject because the light shines through the glass. And then if you have a nine glass subject, I recommend either light here or here. You want it at an angle so you have some contrasty shadows. You can also add mirrors to the bouncing light and white cards on the side. This is one way to use at a 90 degree angle where I'm cutting the light circle in half because I'm having a beginning effect. And for non glass subjects, well, then you would have to have a light over here to bring this out better. And notice what I did I rose the light because I want to bring this out more. You might want to position the light farther away to soften it. You can also lessen the power if it's a strobe at the lowest setting because it's powerful. Or gain the light up. There's all sorts of ways you could use a light with just one light and a clear glass subject. It all depends on what you want to do. You can add light here with white cards or silver cards on the side. And this is how to add light. This is coming at a 40 degree angle. And there's a, you know, white reflector, a fusion reflector where it softens the light. And these are white cards that bang in the lights. Or you can have silver cards too, it depends on what you want to do. This is how to have, you know, two lights. We have the light in the back, fusion background, stretcher frames from Plaza Arts. We have a mug subject, but they have a light coming over here, which angles it. So you bring it and make it a contrast old subject where you want to have contrasting shadows. Without this front light, we just get a silhouette 
unless it's what you want, but I don't. That's why we have a light coming from here or light coming from here. You can also have white cards on the side too. These are how you use your G clamps. They hold the scrim up. This is at a 40 degree angle. And this is at a 90 degree angle. And these are spring clamps. You could also do this. You could do, these are C clamps, but you could also do this both with very big uh, spring clamps. And this is a spring clamp, does the same thing. This is how we have, you know, blue gel with clothespins on the strobe. And this is a grid to make the light more contrasting. And these are um, fusion screw walls. You can have one, you can have two. You can have like a white wall, you can have a strobe here, a bounce light in. You can also have a silver wall. It all depends on what you want to do. Same thing with white walls, one wall, two walls. And these are silver walls, where if you have a light here, a bounce light on the subject. You can also have gold walls too, but you make a yellowish taint, that's what you want. This is a black wall. This is, you know, great if a strobe bleeds too much light, or if you just wanna have a black background or just somehow modify the light. This is just one strobe, and this is, the strobe is on the back of black foam board. This is a glass subject, and it's shining right through. This is great to show off the edges. This is gonna be the picture, not this. If you wanna modify the light by bringing it closer, you can do that. This is two strip globes at a 40 degree angle. This is at an angle. And I recommend putting scrims in front of the strobes. This is using two strobes, but is also using natural light from the window where you wanna have the light come at a 40 degree angle. Three, you wanna angle the blinds to get that 40 degree angle. Again, we have, we have two strip strobes for the back. We just have one big strobe you have a key light strobe. You also have some light coming through the window. And the whole point of doing this is you have a, like a contrasting image where you want to have like a shadow where it looks more interesting. Have any questions? You can just email me at mputrellart2016 at gmail.com. This is what the camera, my camera diagram looks like. This applies to any camera, not just a Canon. For still life, I like to start with the 125th, use aperture 16. Sometimes I have to cut the shutter to 1/250th. Usually, like to leave my ISO at 100. This is exposure bracketing here. This is a 19-point focus selection. And this is like the standard, which is good for sharp pictures. And the sun character is for daylight. It's about 52K, but you can also uh, set the Kelvin to higher. And this is the um, evaluated mode. This is great for putting contrast in the images. I always shoot in raw because you have the most editing capabilities. 
AI focus is great for still life in nature. And as I'll serve you for sports, I would just recommend using AI focus. And it just is I recommend just using one shot, but you could use a two second timer, 10 second timer. You could use the H plus for high speed, H plus for low speed continuous. This is the daylight. This is like the white balance. Like I said, I always like to use the daylight balance at 52K because it's setting the camera that. But you could also, you could also change the Kelvin to something higher like 55K. And these are all the other temperatures. I would never use AWS because it's at least natural and you could be adding artificial ingredients to the photograph. Then there's a custom white balance where you set the white balance, you're in fo manual focus where you just shoot a white card then you set it. But the bad thing about this is if the light changes, then you gotta get a new, you gotta do a new custom white balance. And that's why I just like to use 50 K or you can set the Kelvin to 5,500 K. And this is the camera diagram for the noise reduction. One is automatic, but two, they'll take back to get the original screen because different algorithms will take place. Two is great for correcting blue color caps. But I just have it at one, but if you have a blue color cast problem, I'd use two. In the modern DSRs today, they don't have this problem, but when they started out, they did, but the setting for the noise diagram is there if you need to use it. You got high speed noise reduction. I just like to use two for strong because you're making photo processing easier. One's also good to use, but it's better to use one or two or even standard than to disable it. We talked about some of this. I recommend starting everybody in Adobe RGB and then converting to sRGB. Or if you can do Pro Photo, but there may be colors that in Pro Photo that the human eye cannot recognize. Then you have white balance. You, okay, you could also set the Kelvin higher. Then we have a social bracketing where you take the same image. A stop under, a stop over, the same thing with two. It all depends how much light you have. And sometimes I just like to use one exposure apart. This is a great solution like the white flex table, but this is the black flex table. Use the same stuff. We talked about one for plastic shine and two for little scratches and three for big scratches. I know you've seen these tools before, but you need them for the black flex table because there's always going to be dust and you're always going to be cloning using the black flex table. Drives every still life photographer crazy, but you just do the best you can do. Before you take the photograph, you just blow some air so you blow off some dust. Or you just get a link cloth with a gentle wipe of Novus One for a clean shine. So my mirrors look like the armature crypts. We talked about this, we have duct tape, armature wire. Talk about C-clamps. You can buy them at any hardware store. You can order them online. You can buy, these are spring clamps in many sizes or clothes fins. You have gels for changing the color of the subject. In the background, you have silver cards for adding strong light without using another flash, or you could also use gold cards and you get yellowish taints. Then you have photo this in a black aluminum foil where you can create a snoot with clothespins. Then you have um, film draft paper, 
You can put this on stretcher frames from Plaza Arts. In some of my scrims, you can also buy the frame at a store that's already made, like Target. We talked about my black and white and clear plexiglass sheets. There's many ways you can do with each. We talked about white cards. Big ones are great, so are small. It depends how you want to affect the lights. And they're big black cards. They're great in all sizes. All depends on what you want to do to affect the light, like taking out a glare in product photography or just when a strobe bleeds too much light, you use a black card to control the bleeding of too much light. Now I'm going to do the Adobe Photoshop and also Adobe Camera Raw demo. First, going to go to Adobe Camera Raw Bridge. So I'm going to open up one. I'm going to do Control or Command R. And I'll do something about these spots. Try to fix it, but I think the highlight's a little too bright. I need to do sharpening, at least over 140. I need noise reduction. Again, if you want to just work on color shifting the highlights, the midtones, or the shadows, or just all three. I like to remove any chromatic aberration on these profile corrections. But see if I can straight up by just putting the auto, the A. Well, even in light, I like to try see if I can take some of this out. <coughs> Put it in dark. Yeah. You can create vignetting, you can take it out. In this case, I'm going to put it in. Suppose I'm going to do Control A. I'm going to sync all the settings. I'm going to just take out what I didn't put in. I'll leave all this in. I'm going to leave the color mixer out, take out this. Anything I don't want to use. I'll do Control R or Command R. I'm going to check this one again. And I did do it. Okay, good. So now what I'm going to do, now I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop. Let's see, let's see. Um, I'm 
I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to um, do lots of Devi Shodashop. Thought I had it out. I'm going to do a new share, and now I'm going to go to Adobe Photoshop. So then I'm going to open up those images. I'm going to navigate to the folder. A little black flexi folder. Just gonna open the image. We got a lot of work to do in this image. Go to my actions. I talked about my actions. Okay, I wanna show my actions. Play actions. I make it all this stuff. This is my black watermark. This is my white watermark. Actually, I'm going to go to my, actually, hold it. What I'm going to do, now I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to paint. I'm using a, a burn blending mode. Well, actually, this is burn. I'm using a lumosity to burn. I'm going to burn it everything. I think we also, um, now I'm going to show another trick where I'm going to bring up the frequency separation. Great for cloning. You want to, when you're in a high frequency, you want to make sure this is not checked. But there's another way you can do it like this. We got about levels adjustment. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this black quickly. And you can also do this. 
is you, know, you shift F5, you bring up the content aware, you bring up the fill, you can do the foreground, background, but we're doing content aware. Shift in fives, whoops. And you can also do this. Got this vignette. I'll come out blurry, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take something out of it. I like to have an inventing effect because it makes it look more interesting. I'll do more cloning. I'm not going to save it now, but. So I could just do it like this. Then I have my three actions. And that's what I got. And then I'm gonna go to F12. I'm gonna bring back the original file. I don't wanna save changes. I wanna talk about the next image. I want to do my dodge and burn. And then I want to do, let's see, well, I want to do control T to make that smaller. And sometimes I just like to um, also lower the opacity to make it now it's powerful. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting white because I want to reveal more of the product character. Black would hide it. You know, white reveals black hides. And then I'm going to bring out my um, the frequency separation.
I like to do my closing here. Doing this quick because of teaching prophecy, teaching purposes. I'm using my clone in a high frequency. These are low frequencies when you use a filter. You shift that five. That five. Go back to here. Now, I think we got a vignetting problem. So I'm going to go my raw filter. I want to put in more. There are many ways to use it. I want to go back to my. Make sure this is not checked. Sample all layers because I'm work right. You know, this is not perfect editing, but just trying to teach. Make it black. Whole point of doing this is to bring out the subject more. I want you to look at the subject. Want to show off the edges and you know, I want to bring again. I'm calling this speckle filter, I'm calling a dozen scratches, and I'm also calling the F the sharpen sharp mask. And all you have to do is just, you know, click on this button and they all go. Then if I wanted to do this, I want to put a black frame around. If you want the black frame to add value to the image, and if you, I'm going to look at the action. This is a big action. Calling this action. Now the condition. I'm calling others. So my actions call other actions. I like have a button, but all you do is click buttons. I'm going to push F12 because I don't want to save changes. So that was it. You know, you just, I'd recommend using people using actions and just using actions and other actions. And I recommend people using blending modes.
<laughs> Many ways use Photoshop in the with the black flex table as well as the white flex table. We talked about our, my Facebook groups, my business links. You're welcome to join either. And then if you have any questions, you can always email me at mfuturelr2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for letting me do this presentation.